So today I am going to show you how to make a big box, a seven inch box. And when I mean seven inch square, I mean seven across by deep by tall. So if you're here, say hi. Um, and if you're on replay, say um, do hashtag replay. Um, but welcome. Today is September 10th, Thursday. And you're with Tony Tesla, so let's get to it. All right, so first let me show you some swaps that I've recently gotten or received. So this one um, is from a friend, Diane, and this is using a new set. She actually cut this part out and glued it on. It's one from the holiday catalog. And then this looks like the subtle embossing folder that she inked the one side and then ran it through. So that is, that's really cool. That's a really cool effect. Now here, this is from Nancy. That's a, it's a cute Halloween card. I like the scallop and then the stitch circle and this has some dies with it, little cobweb. Oh, it looks like I need to bring this down. Um, and then this is that nice metallic mesh ribbon, which is like silver. And uh, I think that's really gonna go good even with some Christmas cards, so. Nice. And then I've got some birthday cards. So this one they, um, she colored in, this was that paper from last year from the celebration that was like, sh it's shiny and it's got um, gold and copper, like metallic on it and um, coloring with the markers. And then I love this person with the, all these candles cause that's me with, you know, like a hundred candles. I love it. Thanks Leslie. And this one's from Jamie. I love these colors. Orange and purple and green. Love them. Little flowers that she punched out. Nice. So thank you, girls. I love the swaps. I love the birthdays. Okay, so one sip of coffee. So you may remember a month or so ago, I made this big poinsettia. I used um, two different sets. I used Rooted in Nature and the new leaf set um, from the new catalog. I can't even remember the name anymore. But the Rooted in Nature was these two top pieces. And I just stamped them all and embossed it. And then this one, um, love not Love of Leaves, that's from the holiday one. Ugh, it's killing me. It'll come to me later. But I just stamped them all around in Versamark, embossed it in gold, and cut it out just to see how they would all fit together. And it made this big giant poinsettia. And I just glued them together. You can see, um, I didn't pop anything up. I was just getting it down quick. And then I added some gilded gems. But I don't wanna waste this, so I wanted to make a box. So I measured, and it's about seven inches. It's gonna hang off a little bit, but that's okay. And this one, yeah, just a hair over seven inches. Um, so to make a box this big, I wanted it to be square. I've done this before, um, but let's talk about some engineering stuff of boxes first. So the easiest box to make is whether it's square or rectangle, this isn't a good rectangle, but the easiest thing is you make all the score marks the same. Um, and this one, we could even go. All right, then you would cut your flaps to assemble. That's the basic premise of any box making from one sheet of paper. All right, and then remember boxes there's lids and the bottoms, and the bottom has to be a little bit smaller, and by little, I mean like a sixteenth of an inch, or the top has to be bigger. It all depends on how your paper turns out, and we'll talk about that later. So this is from one sheet. Now if you think about um, an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you can only get so big. Like, if these were two inches, then that's four, so this would be seven, eight and a half, four and a half. You could make a four and a half by seven inch box, two inches deep. 
So then let's look at like a 3D version because I want a seven by seven by seven box. So that means all these pieces, all these sides would be seven. We don't have 21 by 21 paper, 21 inch paper. So you have to make panels. All right. Now each panel, you can have a two panel, this is a flat, or a single panel. And a single panel is the way we're gonna have to go today. Um, because, so this is the side flap that you would attach things with. And then we'd have a bottom piece here too. Um, so the bottom, even to make a two panel thing, if we wanted the bottom to be completely covered, seven and seven, that would be 14. We don't have that either. So what I'm gonna do is do single panels, which is gonna be down here. Let me flip this over. Each panel, I want a half inch border, just cause I do. That's what I like to have my panels stuck together with. And I want this piece to be seven, and this will be four, because I wanna use, I wanted to start with an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and cut it down minimally. So this will be the bottom flap, the part that will flap under here, you know? And then this will give us our seven by seven. And then we're gonna make, we're gonna cut and score four of these and attach them. We're cutting this part off and a little bit like that. So this is what we're gonna end up with, okay? Four is good because um, when your flaps come together in the bottom, think of the UPS boxes that we get. Their flaps on the bottom, you know, it's cardboard and they come together and they just barely, they touch, they're pretty tight and then they've got tape on it. With cardstock, I like it to overlap just a little bit. So this four, if you think about it, it's more than half of this number. If this was three and a half, the flaps would just barely touch, but now they're just gonna overlap by like a half inch, maybe an inch. We'll see how it goes. Um, but so this is my general piece that I'm gonna make each flap, seven and a half by 11, and then I'm gonna score at seven and seven. So let's do that. I've already done two of them. Um, I've cut them down anyway. Let's get this out of the way. So I've got seven and a half by 11 piece here. Let me make sure this is still in the camera. Hold up for a minute. Yep, okay. So seven and a half by 11. So I wanna score at seven and then turn it to the left and score again at seven. Okay, so this is gonna be our the side of our box and this is gonna be the part that folds under that will be the bottom, okay? And then I'm gonna cut this little bit off. So I have one piece of this for each side of the box. All right, let me oh, I put this over here. Let's do another one. So score it at seven. Now you wanna, when you're scoring, you wanna do your scoring and turning all in the same direction because I want these flaps to be on the same side and in the same spot on all four pieces. It'll just go together better. Oh, I mean, you need it too, because you need it, you'll see. All right, so now let's cut. So I wanna cut, since I've got a score line, I wanna cut on this side of the score line. So I'm like cutting that score mark off. And some people may wanna angle that part. Um, for the bottom, I like it to be straight. And then just a little notch there. So we've got that. And then we'll do the same thing here. Now the reason I didn't use 12 by 12 for this part is because it doesn't really get you a whole lot. I mean, because of the, uh, you want the bottom to touch, you know, you don't want the bottom pieces to not meet. 
the biggest you could go would be like an eight inch box really and that would give you eight and four here and they would you know both these pieces would meet in the middle so you can't really make more than an eight by eight box okay so now we fold all these And I've already got two other ones, so that's why I'm only doing two for you now. So don't think, oh, she's only, she's missing two. I'm not missing two. All right, so tell me hello if you are here. So now for these two, you can use red line tape or glue. I'm gonna use liquid glue. Um, so all we're gonna do to attach all of these is this flap, we're gonna put glue on it, and then we're gonna sit this right up here. And then we're going to do the next one and the next one. All right, but I don't. I already did a group of two, so we'll do these. And I am butting this right up to the edge. It's kind of hard to see being so far away from my face. Hopefully, I think that's good. And I just have to hold this here for a sec. Hi, Cecilia. Oh, you're not on replay. You're on live. I'm here. So we are making a huge box. We're making a seven inch by seven inch by seven inch. So tall or wide, deep, tall. All right, and then I'm just gonna push this down and looks like I got it close enough. All right, so this is, oh, I had glue stuck. Actually, that's gonna bother me. I need to get that off of there because that's gonna stick to other stuff. Thank God for these little things, right? Adhesive removers. Okay. And I got more glue there. That's the only thing about using the liquid glue is that sometimes it goes everywhere or places where you don't want it to go. But ink is the same way, right? Sometimes you get ink on your fingers and you don't realize it. All right, back to this. So we've got our two panels glued together. Let's see. You might wanna use that other, um, that extra sticky tape that we used to have. Um, I forget what it was called, Fast Fuse. So here I've got my other two pieces. And so here, panel, panel. So now I'm going to attach these. So we'll have a line of four of these panels. And I'll try not to get glue everywhere. Let me pull this a little closer to myself. And then I will press this down. And we'll sit here for a minute. <clears throat> now, if you wanted to stamp or um, make any, you know, designs or whatever on the paper, you should do that first. I'm just making this box straight with nothing on it, um, just to show you all. But I've made these before, and I will cover each panel with some designer series paper, so that's an option too. All right, so let me just roll this by left to right. So we've got all of our panels and then this one, which is going to be easy to attach. So all we have to do, that looks like something's not lining up. Oh, let me trim that. Oh no, it's just a trick. So I'm gonna put glue here. This is folded flat. And then folding this last piece, this should line up perfectly and it mostly does. It's gonna be good enough for sure. All right, so just gotta hold this for a sec. And hope that didn't squish out the back. Nope, all right. So this gives us our four, our seven by seven by seven box. Now let's flip it over, and I know this is really close, but do you see how, ah, these bottom pieces, 
see how they're gonna overlap some? That is about it, an inch or so. So what I do is, I put a little bit of glue right down here. And see how it's kind of wiggly because it's loosey-goosey? It's not gonna be sturdy, really, until we get all these pieces down, like this, okay? So, and the liquid glue does let you have some of that movement. So I'm putting, I know this is off camera, but I put the glue on that flap, get everything moving. All right, I'm gonna put this glue All right, and now, while it's all still kind of movie, I need to flip it down. And now I gotta stand up and get my hand in there. Just to press things down. Now I have before, um, if I didn't get an overlap on the bottom pieces, hey, Laura Lee, if I didn't get the bottom pieces to overlap, I would add like, a piece of cardboard to the inside of the bottom here um, and you could do that anyway just to make it a little sturdier because let's face it this is paper it's cardstock it's not gonna hold like a Yankee candle and in fact what I put in it the last time I made one of these was um I crocheted a scarf and I like rolled it all up and had it in the box so you know something lightweight Okay, so this is our seven, seven inches across and then tall. So that is our box. Now we want to make a lid. So like I said, a lid and the box have to be a little bit different. Um, so the box has to be smaller, the bottom has to be smaller, and the top bigger, vice versa. So what you want to do... I need to measure the bottom just to make sure I wanted it to be seven. Hmm, okay, it is seven. Sometimes you don't get things taped or glued down right or even cut. It all comes from the cutting and scoring. If something's off, your box measurement will be off. Okay, and see this? That's got one little mark, so it's not quite perfect. So it is seven and like a sixteenth on one side. Let me double check. Nope, this one is seven. Interesting. So that all had to come with my flaps, but it is workable. All right, so get a different piece of paper. So this is going to be seven and a sixteenth, seven. And then we have our flaps. So this is going to tell me the math that I need for, um, you know, cutting the paper. So now I want the flaps to be, seven inch box is pretty big, like just a one inch border, that's, that's not going to look good. Um, I want at least like an inch and a half. So let's go with that. So these will be one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, one and a half. And I want to add a sixteenth of an inch. So this will be, that's 10, that's 10 and a sixteenth. So I want to add, make it 10 and an eighth by here, 10 and a 16th. And this is gonna be a tight squeeze um, because I was adding, how I got that was the one and a half, you know, that's the, the part that I wanna hang over the sides. And that's as big as I want. That's the seven inch wide plus the extra 16th of an inch. So, all right, I'm gonna cut my paper and I do need 12 by 12 for this. So, I'm going with, always artichoke because um, that's the 12 by 12 that I had that I thought would look good. And this is Mary Merlot that I used, by the way. 
So Mary Merlot and Always Artichoke. Probably Old Olive would have looked good. That would have been a little lighter. But this is what we're going with. All right, so I need 10 and an eighth. And 10 and a 16th. And the 16th is, that's just what I found to be a good uh, difference in the tops and bottoms. And this, I will actually throw that away. All right, now I want one and a half inch around all the sides. It is always too much trouble to try to do one and a half and then one and a half from this end because you know it's not quite exact it's ten and an eighth or ten and a sixteenth so I just do one and a half from the left side always and then flip your paper so you're always getting that one and a half is just like a standard box where I will go I'm gonna cut on the left side of the score mark straight up and then come in at an angle for the flaps and then I'm going on the right side of the score mark straight up and then come in at an angle and then flip it this way and do the same thing left side straight up and then come in at an angle. And then the right side of this score line straight up and come in at an angle. Oh. All right, now I've just got to fold everything up. Now for this one, I am going to use tape because I don't want to sit here and hold fast fuse. This is what I'm going to use. This is a, we no longer have it. Um, now they have the new stamp and seal plus, which I really, I don't have any experience with yet. I haven't gotten it. Plus I really have about like 20 of these fast fuse refills. So I'm going to use this sticky strip would also be good. Um, but I didn't feel like fighting with that today. All right. So, tape on the flaps, the inside. Oh, come on. Okay, it's always something, right? And again, if you wanted to doll this up on the outside, go for it. But really, I'm gonna put this poinsettia right on top. I think before I actually put something in it, I would add some gold um, organdy ribbon that I have. Oh, this is having a hard time with that. All right, so then we put our flaps up. Squeeze. Oops. That almost went badly. All right, I can see I've gotten a little, one side is sticking up a little bit more. See that? I'm going to snip that off. All right, now the trick will be how one side of this box was seven and an eighth, and one was, or seven and a sixteenth. All right, that actually fits really good. You don't want it to buckle or anything. So, hmm, let me try it the other way just to see if that's better. That I like better, that's a snugger fit, so that must be the right way. So that is a seven by seven by seven box. And like I said, I would put this on top 
right on top of here. Like when I put something in it, then I will tie like probably five eighths inch gold um, organdy ribbon around it and have the bow over here. And then I will sit this on top and I will probably pop it up with like some dimensionals. So that is the box. Um, this has been pretty quick today. The only other thing I have to show you is Christmas card sample. So this year I'm doing four different sessions of Christmas cards and you'll get all the materials pre-cut and everything. You have to use your own stamps and inks, um, but you'll get an embellishment and then all these pieces. So RSVP for this session is next week on the 14th. And then the, we're going to do this by Zoom, the actual class, on the 26th. And I believe I said that was going to be at 11 o'clock. Hey, Susie. I am just wrapping up, so you'll have to watch the, um, from the beginning. Made a big box. Um, all right, so the class is going to be the 26th on Zoom. And I will be able to record it, because I've already got one person that's um, not sure if she can make it. So I can record it on Zoom. I don't know how long it'll keep it up there in the cloud, maybe 30 days, um, I'm not sure, but we'll work it out. But so these are the cards um, that we're gonna make for the first session using the Cherish the Season set, which is the bells. Any bell set you have, you should be able, hey Tracy, um, any bell set you have should work. Like these ones, I'm gonna die cut for you out of the foil and so you'll have those, actually I hand cut that. You're gonna emboss and hand cut that. Which other one did I cut? Oh, these, I die cut those. Um, but so you'll get the pieces, three of each card. So you'll get 12 cards total. And um, so RSVP for that is next Tuesday, which I also had to change my cigar box class to the RSVP for Tuesday also, just cause I wanna put everything all in the same order. I don't want to put an order in and then have to do something two days later. That was just poor planning on my part. Um, so that's it. Uh, I will try to get some better pictures of this box. It's hard to get, you know, to show. It really is humongous, a seven inch square box. Um, but I love it and I'll try to get pictures and post that. And uh, I will see you next week. Actually, Susie, I may see you Saturday if you're going to be there. I can't remember if you were going to be in town or not. Um, so thanks for being here and that's it. Have a good weekend. Bye.